Hey, welcome to the third lecture. So in this lecture, I'd like to uh, solve an example about axial load. Axial load actually are the loads or which are normal forces you apply along the uh, member. So in this example, I have one beam on the top, which is rigid, rigid beam AB. Rigid is important, meaning that when you apply force to it, it doesn't bend, it doesn't rotate, it stays in the same shape. That's actually the meaning of rigid. Now, one side, we are, I have a steel rod, and then in the other side, or I have, like, we call them short post, and the other side, I have aluminum. So, one side is steel, the other side aluminum, then we apply 9 kN on the top. The question asks me that if you look into the point F, where the point F is going to go? So, what would be uh, the movement or the vertical displacement of point F? So to answer this question, I just want to go briefly over uh, the, the problem. So we apply 9 kN here, and then it's, this is actually has a distance, right? So if you consider the distance, you can see 9 kN is much closer to the steel than aluminum. So meaning that majority of the force applies here, and then less are applied there. So this is actually proportional to the, the, to the distance. So for instance, here distance is 200, here is 400. Now your overall distance is 600, so I can say 4 over 6 goes here, uh, 9 times 4 over 6, so the answer for this is 6 kN go to steel, and then how many of them are comes to aluminum, so it will be 9, 9 times 200 over 600, so this one will be 3 kN. So now the question is that if I apply uh, 6 kN to the steel, and then 3 kN to aluminum, I could see the bar will go down more on the steel, but I'm not sure. I cannot judge because, you know, elongation is FL over AE. The force is higher, right? It has the same length. These two bars, they have the same length. The A is the same. The area is the same for both of them. I need to check again. So before I make any judgment, I can see delta depends on some factors and those factors are F L A E I can calculate the Delta for each of them so what would happen if you apply the force assuming this side is you have more force so the bar will be something look like this again you can see and at all three points on the top that we have like this used to be the original place each point they go down because we applied, again, initially the, the shape, sorry, keep moving. Initially the shape was like this. After the application, it will go like this. It will go like inclined, and then you can see I have the steel, I have the F, and I have the element. So I'm just thinking ahead of how to approach this problem, how to solve it. So let's go back to the problem. So in this case, I know this, um, you, you can actually calculate how much the force in each side of this is. I talk about proportional, I just use my mind of thinking ahead. But what you could see is that if you do a moment about point A, you can actually calculate, uh, if you do moment about point A, you can calculate uh, F of aluminum. We're just doing a moment, so 200 would be times 90 kilonewton. So this was 90, sorry, so 60. My bad, I just need to correct myself. This is 90, not 9. This is 90 kilonewton, so this will be 60 and this will be 30. Okay, so we do a moment about point A, we find FB or F of aluminum, then if you you know that F of aluminum, if you do sum of F of Y equal to zero, you can get F of steel plus F of aluminum is 90, so F of steel will be 60. So we already found the F for steel, the F for aluminum, I just need to calculate the rest of them. So each of them, they have a diameter of 20, so the diameter on both of them is the same. You can actually calculate the area for both of them, I just need to check, okay? So yeah, so yeah, it still is 20 millimeter uh, of the diameter, but the aluminum is 40, so they, are, they don't have the same diameter, they have different diameter, I have to keep this one in my mind. So 
So I, I find the area for each of them. Area is equal to pi d squared divided by 4. I calculate the area for each. Then from there, I calculate the elongation for each of them. So it's going to be just simply substitution, right? For instance, f of steel is 60, 60 kilonewton. The length of steel is given to us at the same length at 300 millimeter, which is going to be 0 0.3 meter. And then the E is given, E of steel is 200 gigapascal, 200 times 10 to the power of 9. And I have the E of aluminum. So I'm going to substitute all the numbers here. In this case, I found the delta for steel is F of steel, L of steel. And then for F of steel, I have uh, 60 times uh, 0 0.3 divided by A of steel, which is uh, we, ca we calculated down there times the 200 times 10 to the power of 9, that's E. So I found the delta for steel, I found the delta for aluminum. Then the next time, the, the next part of the question asks me how much the point F will move down. So as you can see here, delta of steel is almost twice the delta of aluminum because again, it, has, it was a, a smaller diameter, more force. E was a slightly larger, but not, not, not that much, like three times larger, but you have yeah, you have the area, which is three times higher, and then you have the force, which is twice higher. So I got to uh, I got to this point. I point A, which was on the top here. Uh, the point A moved down for the point A came from here to here, which moved. You can see, you see the bar was like this when you apply the force. Now the bar looked like this. So this is the delta for aluminum. That's the delta for steel. And we want to find how much point F came down. So basically, you need to use similarity between triangles, but you need to use, use it like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to su subtract delta of aluminum from delta of steel. That will be this distance. I already have distance, this distance. I have this distance. And I'm going to use similarity between triangles to find the movement of point F. So basically what we found, again, I'm going to call that a distance y. That's not actually delta of f. That's a distance like y. And then this is delta of aluminum. We have delta of steel here. And then delta of f would be delta of aluminum plus this y. Now, the similarity between triangles, uh, what we use, we said that, uh, OK, so here is 200. The whole thing is 300. Then uh, delta of um, A minus B, which is that point A minus point B, it came to be this much. Then 400 over 600, Y is equal to this. Then you cross multiply this, you found the Y. Once we found the Y, we, we add the Y with the delta of aluminum. And then this will give us delta of point F. So we are using this concept. Um, of elongation to answer some questions. So those questions, again, in this case, we found the elongation of one point. But sometimes you want to find how much the force between the objects are. Let me just to give you an example. I have a piece of material subjected between it, like it's already enclosed between two surfaces, and I apply a force to it. When I apply the force to it, I want to find how much the reaction here is and how much the reaction there is. So when you apply, for instance, 20 Newton here, you want to know how much of this 20 Newton is up there and how much of it is down there. So basically, the reaction that's developed there is uh, it's more than what we could think. It's, it's just it's talk about elongation. It's talk about the stress in, in, in that section. So, But what we know, we know the distance from here to here is limited. right? When you apply the 20 Newton, this point, which was here, it may move down here, right? But the overall length of the object didn't change because we call it is is already constrained, right? You have a constraint or that constraint, you don't go beyond that. Point A and point B are rigid. It doesn't, again, the whole subject is, is restricted between these two points. When I apply 20 Newton at this location, the, this point may go down, but the whole object, the whole length will stay the same. So if we talk about uh, what we know in um, statics, you can see there is going to be a reaction 
from point B, there is a reaction from point A. So uh, if you, you can get into one equation, and that equation is f of A plus f of B a minus 20 is equal to 0. So the two forces that up there and low there, uh, if you add those two forces together, you're going to get 20 Newton. So the next part is that, like in, in, in such cases, I want to find um, like the reaction at these two places. So sometimes you may have a gap, like in this case, delta A, delta B, they are zero. So uh, if you have delta A, I'm, I'm talking about this portion and this portion. So in this case, the, you get delta negative for the bottom one, but the delta for the top is positive. So if you add those two together, they become zero. In an example that I want to talk about, in this example, I have a steel rod that's connected to point A. And then we apply 20 kilonewton. There is a, there is a gap this time. The gap is 0 0.2 millimeter. So um, what we know, we know that when you apply the force there at the max again, I'm not sure again. My my point is going to get there. It's not going to get there, but it's going to fill the gap. Assuming that it's going to fill the gap, after that it doesn't go anywhere. So. Uh, what I could say, I could say delta of A and delta of B, if you add these two delta together, you get the gap. Again, for many equations, we have to think of that equation ourselves, think about that constraint ourselves. And this is actually axial laws where we have constraints. They are indetermined, meaning that you don't know the forces. Remember, this problem you cannot solve it in a static. In a static, you have only one equation, sum of f of x equal to zero. And from there, you have the force P, you have the reaction A and reaction at B. So FA plus FB minus P equal to zero, or P minus that equal to zero. And that's it. You have one equation from a static, nothing else. Now, something which is not determined, how can we make it determined? So what we use, we use equation for um, delta A plus delta B. Again, this equation will help me to do the solution. Delta at A is FA LA over EA AA. Again, this time we have the same material, I'm guessing. So I just need to check that. Yeah, so all are steel. And then the area of it is, um, the gap is this much, the P is this much, E is still is given to us, the diameter is given to us at 10 millimeters. So same diameter. So in this equation, I'm going to put them in put uh, EA, AA, AB, and everything that I have, all the information I have. I can calculate the area because diameter was 10 millimeter. I can calculate the area. And uh, the area is going to be pi d squared over 4. Then once I found the area, I can um, put it back into this equation. In this equation, you already know that delta is F L over EA or AE. So I've substituted everything there to get my answer. Uh, but the way that you can see, you can see I put a negative here for f of b. Why I put a negative there? Because I know one of them is going to be compression, right? If you look at point A, in point A, you have the elongation. That side, it become elongated. You get the tension there. But the other side, you have the compression. So uh, in this case, if I apply the force p here, you can see this side, I'm going to have I'm going to have a tension in this side, it becomes elongated, but in the other side down here, I'm going to have a compression. So that's why I put a negative for f of b. And that negative is because of it being a compression. So you can, you can actually uh, substitute the values and then go ahead and find one equation. As you can see, uh, again, we have the same denominator, we cross multiply it. A couple of things that you have to keep in your mind that you bring everything, bring the force to Newton, length to meter, E to Pascal, which is Newton per meter square, and then the area to meter square. So every, all your units are on the same uh, scale. So I'm going to put them there. I'm going to end it up with two unknowns, two equations. Then I'm going to solve for F of A and F of B. So this problem that we solve is a statically indetermined problem. You couldn't solve that problem with using static. Now the next uh, problem that I want to go over is, 
In this problem, we have two core, so there are two different materials. Uh, and then in, in the middle of it, I have brass. Outside, I have aluminum. Then they have different diameters. On the top, I apply 9 kilonewton. Given that um, these two, they go down together, right? If the, if the bottom is fixed, the top, we have a plate on the top, which is, again, reinforced concrete plate. You press the force there, these two, they will go down together. And that's going to be one of my constraints. In this case, I'm going to say delta for brass and delta for aluminum is going to be the same. Uh, again, they give me the E for aluminum, E for steel. So, um, again, there's no separation between aluminum and brass. And then these two, they go together down. Because if they become separated from each other, that's where we get one of them. Again, it compressed less than the other one. So, basically, the, the constraint that I'm going to use in this problem is delta of aluminum is equal to delta of brass. And this will be very helpful for me. In the other side, from statics, I know that delta of alpha F, again, out of that 9,000 pound, um, a portion of it will be applied to aluminum and a portion of it will be applied to the brass. So, how much? I don't know. Right? But I know the sum of these two will be ended up as 9,000. The length of both of them are 1.5 feet. Again, I convert it to inch. Remember, I want to bring everything back to the same unit, right? Because PSI is pound per inch square. That's how I'm using. And then down here, they give me the E of aluminum in the unit of KSI, which is 1,000 PSI, right? So now if I want to find E of aluminum, I'm going to say E of aluminum is equal to 10, 10 to the power of 3. This will be 10 to the power of 4. It's KSI. So it will be 10 times 10 to the power of 3 for that. And this will be equal to 10 to the power of 7 PSI. Uh, I'm going to calculate the area for brass, area for aluminum. Remember, for brass, it's just uh, the diameter of 1. It's going to be easy. The diameter is, uh, sorry, the radius is 1. You can say pi r square. For aluminum, you have to use uh, because it looks like a ring, and then when you got a ring, you got something like this. So you want to find the area, so it would be pi r outer or r2 to the power of 2 minus pi r1 to the power of 2. You can factor the pi, r2 to the power of 2 minus r1 to the power of 2. In this case, the way I did is pi, 2 to the power of 2 minus 1 to the power of 2. Then I'm going to use this constraint that I have there, put them, put it there, and then start solving for it. Again, you can see the length for both of them are the same. They cross off. And I, I, at the end, I'm going to get to this equation that f of aluminum is twice the f of brass. Then I already know that f of aluminum plus f of brass is 9,000. And I have two unknowns to equation. I can solve for each of them. Question actually at the end asked me to determine the average normal stress. That will be easy to do it too. Because I know the area for each of them, I know the force. I calculate the force from these equations. So basically calculation of sigma is f over a. And I can put it here to find the amount of stress on each uh, each of those materials. Thank you for watching this video. And, and I actually have another video that's coming in a second. That's actually talk about uh, another problem for indeterminate beams, which we have a little bit more variables on it.